Hi, I'm Kev from sonsofcane.com and you're with us again for another video. On this video, we're going to show you things not to do. As usual, the guy with the hat, Chris. What we're going to look at is just six things not to do in a fight or in an altercation. Very quick video, but it's things you might think about doing, but just to give you a heads up, like a hat. Is one of these things not to mess with my wife? You never mess with anybody's wife. No, but my wife's dangerous. Yes, I bet your wife. Mm. As always, if you haven't done so already, please ring the notification bell so you can receive updates on our lovely, lovely channel. Don't forget, smash the subscribe button. And as always, free the fear. Got him first. This is a general guide of things not to do in a fight. It's not definitive, but these are some of the common mistakes that people make. So at number six, six, don't allow your opponent to get too close. You don't know him. So ideally, if Dan's there, I don't want him any closer than where my hand, my arm reaches. He might not be showing his guard. He might be relaxed, waiting for the opportunity. As soon as he steps in too close, it's become predatory, everything's going to start happening in my body, and adrenaline's going to start to dump. All the fight, flight, freeze things are going to be kicking off. Anything he does now is very close and short range, and I've got no real chance of defending myself unless I'm ready for it. Right, we're now on to number five. This is a general rule in life anyway, but don't underestimate your opponent. Dan's a nice, big, strong lad. He's fairly fit. He's doing the London Marathon. Good luck with that. Thank you. He goes down to the gym. He's been training for quite a long time. There are people I meet, and we go to seminars, and you look at them, and you think, you instantly, without thinking about it, make a snap judgment. Then you train with them, and then you think, hmm, what's wrong about him? Don't assume anybody's size or shape or age is any way going to affect what they can do. And the other thing is, do you know how to take a gun off somebody, Dan? Uh, yeah. yeah, we did on Monday. Yeah. Would you take a gun off somebody, Dan? No. No, because there's also the question of what are you willing to do? Yeah. So, yeah, I could show you a hundred techniques. Would I be able to do any of them? That's the other problem. Right in at number four. What you don't want to be doing is showboating. So we might be getting into a heated argument about... What's you getting a heated argument about? Um, video games. Video games, there you go. And if I start showboating, so I'm, you know, waving my arms, uh, I, I know 400 styles of Yeah, he's not even impressed. But if you start showboating, how many times have you watched a fight and they come up in the ring, an MMA fight, boxing fight, and the guy comes up and he's, st I can't stay you down, this is terrible, he's too tall. But they're trying to intimidate him. And within 30 seconds, they're knocked out. The guy who isn't showboating tends to be the one who wins the fight. So showboating is not a good idea. Try and keep your reserve. Try and keep calm. Keep your ego in check. Hot in at number three. Don't wait for the attack. The golden rule of karate was always, there is no first attack. This is why all catters start with a block. However, an attack may not be him throwing the punch or a trusty knee to the groin. As soon as I feel threatened, intimidated, scared and worried that he's going to hurt me, family, break the whatever it is, that's the attack. So that's when I would then counter. So it's not necessarily when he's made a fist there, so at this, he's in my personal space, I would start to be worried. If he's being aggressive, elbow me in the face, things like that, I can then, my counter attack is to attack first, not waiting for him because karate says so. Even the founder of karate said, don't wait for the punch. The attack is when the altercation starts. If he said he's gonna thump me, that's the attack I can then counter. Almost there, but not quite, but at number two. Hi guys, this is another of our infamous lists stories, I'm not going to bore you with them because I am very boring. 
people getting altercations on CCTV, all they see is people doing this. They have become the aggressor. We always teach palms out. You quite often see I've got my cane in the crook of my arm, but my palms are out. I'm not being aggressive. I've taken a passive, submissive stance. I might have my hands down. What I'm not doing is getting into a stance. If he's got any training, he'll, if, as soon as I get into a stunt, he'll know where the weak points are and where I'm open. So try to avoid getting into an openly aggressive stance. Get into a passive, non-aggressive stance which suits you and your fighting type. Not a good stance. Okay. And at the top of the list, at number one, quite a few of the bouncers, door management, whatever they're called these days, all the ones I know to say, we're bouncers. The biggest cause of fights, according to them, is pride, somebody's ego. They get called a lot of names, which I can't repeat in Fair Company. And these people are trying to elicit a fight from them. And people will, I've been, I've had my bike insulted, my car, my clothes. People are trying to get me to bite and get into that altercation so they can fight. So if I said to Dan, ah, nice t-shirt. Thank you. But if I said, where do you get those glasses from, eh? Did your gran give them to you? No, I bought them from Specs. You know, I'm trying to goad him, but he's like, I'm, your pride and your ego is your biggest downfall, and that's what you've got to be wary of. If people call you a name, watch Roadhouse, where he's talking about if somebody calls you this, this, and this, is that an insult? And he went, no, it's two nouns strung together to elicit a specific response. That's what they want. Do you know this person? Well, I know you. But these people, well, they're not in your life. They're not worth fighting over because they called you a name or insulted your shoes. That bad shoes, Kev. Okay, and now we've got a bonus fact from Kev. We did have a hilarious joke, but it would take so long to get a backstory for it that we, you would have lost interest halfway through. But Kev did bring out an interesting point. He brought his phone out and he started using his phone. People get mugged and beaten whilst walking and their phone's stolen because every bit of their attention is focused on their device. So this is one of the things to be wary of. If I use my phone, I'm outside. I'm very, very aware of what's going around me. These things are a godsend and... A hindrance. A hindrance, both at the same time. But phones have caused a lot of crime and I've nearly run people over because they just walked out in the street because they're on their phone and they're not paying attention, they're not aware. So be aware. And also, I'm worried about this because he can phone his wife and have me admonished very quickly. If you looked at our um, Halloween video from last year, the zombie one, yep. we laugh and joke because we both like the zombie movies. We find them quite funny. If you actually look in the street and see how many people are actually just shuffling and all their concentration is on their phone, they look like zombies. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you liked the video, keep your comments down below, give us that big smash on that like button for us, we hope you like it. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you liked the video, don't forget to smash that like button, stick the comments down below. As always, please hit the notification bell. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, you only have to do it once. Please get friends, family, associates, get them to subscribe as well. And as always, very fair.